for me to be great doesn't mean that you have to be less than or I have to make you less than. Um, and if I am doing that, then there's a major insecurity that I have to address within myself because why do I want you to lose just for me to win? I think that this conversation, I didn't exactly know where it was supposed to go, but it's making sense to me. We are modeling something. Do you know how many men have lived from birth to death and never been able to sit with a room full of brothers and give them the roses before they die? Brotherhood. It's one of those concepts that a whole lot of people in culture talk about, but I'm not sure that it's something that many people have actually had. The type of brotherhood where a person is not only a friend, a confidant, somebody that you can lean on, but they're also someone who at the end of the day, it's like they have God-given DNA. They were built to stand by you, built to support you, built to push you in uncomfortable ways. There is something beautiful about brotherhood. And I'm really excited today that I get a chance to spend some time with a couple of my brothers, like some guys who they've pushed me, they've learned with me, they've grown with me. Um, they are part of the reason that I am who I am in this season of my life. And so we're going to just jump in and just have some conversation. I don't know what we're going to talk about. I don't know where we're going. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves to you. And then I'm going to give you the real introductions because what's going to happen is they're going to downplay themselves and they're going to talk in circles about stuff like, you know, like, and then I'm going to be like, OK, like this is who this really is. Right. But I think it's only right that the per the first person that has to introduce himself is, is this man named Jason Hairston. And the reason he has to introduce himself is that this is the first time from the beginning of an episode that the producer of Hope Rising joins us uh, for an entire conversation. So Jay, give give them an, a little bit of an introduction of who you are, and then we'll go to Dylan. Darius, you'll go last because you know you always like to talk. So you'll go last. I said what I said. I said what I said. <laughs> Bishop. I, I'll give him room for a soliloquy. I'm going to give him room. So I'm going to give him room. Every Everybody backs up when, when Darius got to speak. So, Jay, take it away. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, y'all? Uh, this is Jason. Um, yeah, I'm the executive producer of Hope Rising. Um, y'all, I'm sure y'all have heard Maurice, like, name drop me. Um, and I showed up, I think, like, one time, season one. But now you see me the whole time. So, yeah, I'm here. Uh, got a wife and a kid and one on the way. It's great. And uh, happy to be here, guys. Yeah. Dylan, you're up next. Uh, okay. Um, I'm Dylan. Uh, I'm Maurice's brother and Charmaine's husband. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll be loving the Lord. That's really... <laughs> this dude. Here we go. Yeah, he did. I'll be loving the Lord. I wanted to give maximum room for the bishop. You know what I mean? Like, go ahead and get out the way. Like, go ahead and get out the way for the bishop. Wow. Y'all are hilarious. No, I'm serious. I was done. Go like, ahead, Darius. It's all you. The floor what? is yours. He ain't gonna say nothing else. Wow. Wow. Hello, everyone. I'm Darius. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I am married. I've been married for going on seven years now. That's that's interesting. Wow. Let's go. Wow. That flew by. You know? Just hit Let's seven go. too. What's up? Seven club. Look, hey. look, look what the Lord has done. Um, we got three beautiful kids with a pretty big age gap in between there. Madison is 15, and then we drop down to five and then three. And um at the time of this recording, baby girl will be six on Monday. Let's go, baby girl. So let's go. Um shout out to my rally booty butt. Happy about that. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and I guess uh, I just relocated to Charlotte. So there's yeah. that. Yes, you did. Um, Go Charlotte. Excited about that. And, um, you know, I guess the only other thing I have to just say is I'm, I'm really passionate about uh, leadership. And, um, 
and uh, seeing men journey towards wholeness. Those are two of my passions. Uh, and uh, over to you, Maurice. You. <laughs> I knew they weren't going to say not a thing about themselves. That was, uh, I'm, a, I'm a father and uh, I'm a my husband that's that's what you say that's what you say when you're making sure you stay in good standing that was the right thing them the right answers don't get it wrong don't get it twisted y'all did it right you did it right okay i'll, I'll brag on you so you don't got to brag on yourselves so so first of all uh, jason is is the man who holds down this podcast um but he is um he is a man who well first of all his company is everyone wins together right and that's literally his mentality he does a little bit of everything so whether you're talking about making beats and in production music production he's he's all over video production and sound and he's just a little bit of everything he is the type of person who is an uplifter. He's the encourager of the group, right? So when you're feeling some type of way, Jason is going to be the person who opens his heart up so that your heart can heal, so your heart can grow. Uh, today, and we're going to talk about this later, but Jason was talking about how the Lord told him he is a compass. I'm so glad you brought that up. Cool. Right? Sorry, we're going to talk about that later. He's a yeah. compass. And so you often will find out where you stand with God when you talk to him. He's like a reminder of like, have you gone due north? <laughs> have you have you floated away just a little bit? Something Jeez. about the man's heart reminds you of yours. It's a beautiful thing. Now, now, Dylan, I'm, I'm coming oh. for everybody. I'm coming for everybody. Hey, hey, we gonna come back to it. We go. We stay right there. We stay right there. Oh, you, we stay in there. Because it's so it's so true. But the words put put to those words. We've had some, me and Jason have had some very uncomfortable conversations. Mm, yeah. Very uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. And like, you putting words to that thing makes me understand why we had those conversations. Like, mm. Explain that. Explain I did that. not like, I didn't like Jason for a little bit after that. Like, That's he right. would like call and be like, hey man, uh, have you been praying? <laughs> what? <laughs> what you, what Hello, how you doing? How your mama and them? Hey, have you been praying? Like, you know, I just want to make sure that how you moving is how how God wants you to move. And they'd be having me questioning myself about like I was very uncomfortable. But you know, you have to check yourself. Like, if your brother in Christ is like, and you you in that thing with them, and they they ask that kind of a question, you gotta yeah. go for it. And like, mm. everybody everybody ain't gonna ask you that question. You know what I'm saying? Like you can be around Christians your whole life hmm. and nobody ever asks you if you're praying. Like, Sheesh. and so I, that solid brother. Mm -hmm. solid. Yeah. Jason did be coming through with like some very interesting stuff. Like he's, he's done the same with me. Like at times, like he just be like, Hey bro, you just got to understand like you're built different. And I'm like, bro, I'm human. You human. We all human. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we all have the same options to walk with the Lord the same. And he'll just be like, yeah, that's cool too. That's what you're doing. Like, all right, man. Yeah. Cool, bro. Cool. What you're saying is cool story, important, bro. though, right? Because there is this thing in our society, in our culture, where everybody wants to be the same. Us just understanding that, like. For me to be great doesn't mean that you have to be less than or I have to make you less than. Um, and if I am doing that, then there's a major insecurity that I have to address within myself, because why do I want you to lose just for me to win? Told you we go in there today. There's something about Jason that he brings that nobody else can do because there's something yeah. about the way he is tethered to the Lord's heart. I mm. can't I don't even know what mm. that means, but it's a thing. Yeah, that's humbling. Um, and it, and it <laughs> like it, it really is humbling because like as Maurice goes through the gambit of like who you all are like listening to today, like you're going to understand. Um, but that's crazy because I like I, <laughs> it, it has to be God. Right. Because I don't even like think about that for real. It's just kind of like, hey, you know, it's just I'm just checking in this. How are you? And it's like. For for me, it's easy to see greatness, right? Like, like I I I see like with these three fellas here, like it's easy to see how great they are, and so like whenever I see they're not operating in the greatness that's so blatantly apparent, at least to me, it's like 
hey, just want to make sure that like you still like know who you are. Like you're him. Mm. Like one of like let's not forget you're him for real. And so um that's interesting that it comes out in that way because like I, and I mean like we all get there, right? We all get into these lows of insecurity, self-doubt and everything. That's understandable, but it's like for me, at least for these guys, where I step in or where I feel like I want to step in, it's like, wait, no, no, we're we're not just going to run past like who you are. Like each these three men are all easily like hundred thousand dollar, at least like six figure, seven figure men. Every single one of them, like like they're 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 men with like and it's not all about the finances, but just saying like they like they just have that kind of big financial draw about them because of like the giftings and everything that they hold inside of them. Like each of them have like weightiness that like the Put body of Christ needs. You're in it right now. It's, <laughs> go ahead and show who you are, Jason. Lord have mercy. <laughs> this is really funny because it, it's really just coming out naturally. But it's like, but it's just like I need y'all like to understand, like, like, like we've had intimate conversations with each other and it's like where their heart is with god how they see things it's so like 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 yeah simon simon like simon sinek he's cool he deserves the bag but so does dylan sellers but so does maurice f martin but so does darius j salter like like yeah they, like they cool like they got their ted talk and whatnot but easily i'm in a circle of cats that can easily stand in that red circle so like what are we talking about? You know? So I don't know. That's that's just sheesh. You know, you know, normally I would be like, no, nah, no, nah, not me. I'm in a season of my life and be like, Yeah, you're absolutely right, brother. I <laughs> need on. that bag. I can absolutely mm-hmm. stand in that circle. You know what I mean? Like Thanks. it's it's nice to run with some fellas who like you don't have to like dim your light to be around. Like yes. we just when we show up, we show up together and we shine brighter. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. nobody has to dim in order for us to be in each other's presence, and it's it's a blessing. It really is. That's because nobody's Everyone in competition wins together. You guys are not my competition. That's reality. That's Back. reality. Back. I've been, you know, it's it's funny because you you just said the words "I'm him," right? And mm-hmm. I've been thinking about that those words in so many different directions because in my life I'm stepping into no, but really I am him. And there's also this thing where I'm pursuing Christ. And so the more that I die to self, the more I am him. Right. And so it's like, it's deep. Y'all never never thought of that? No. That's amazing. (laughs) Say that like, that's amazing. Like, how did you not? Stop talking to me. So, so as, as we're talking about, I thought on, maybe, I thought maybe pop know. culture had talked about that already. So I, maybe, okay, I didn't know. No, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with you, Mike. I see Darius on, with hold me. On, hold on. There, well, when we get to Darius, we're gonna talk about Darius. He done walked outside in North Carolina enough in the mountains. He are the Lord already done whispered that to him. So <laughs> he was walking by some tree. A bird just just tweeted it to him on the way by. We not Darius, tweeted Darius. It, nobody was worried about you. I already knew you knew. So that I am him is tough. Cause, cause, cause that's an example. Cause I know Maurice, you're going to do all everybody. And I know we got to move after this, but like, so we can take time to like, so y'all really understand the visionary of this podcast, Hope Rising. Like, this is who Maurice is a deep spiritual, intellectual thinker. And it's like, he, like, when you talk to Maurice, you can't help but to be brought to a place. <laughs> like, like he's going to make you question he's going to make you think he's going to make you face truth in in a loving but also like no you ain't gonna run from this now like that's the that's the way he operates y'all and like he like he is a six-figure man i'm telling you like yo he's a six-figure man like that that, like that's the kind of thing that it is man but it's like that that's what maurice holds inside of him like you can't walk away with a conversation with maurice without being like Man, he really got me thinking about some stuff. I'm a little bit in my feelings because he got in my business and I didn't tell him, but he's right. Mm. Dang it. <laughs> like Listen, Maurice is going him. to he's going to uh walk you to the fire. Mm. Right. Okay. Then get you to walk in the fire and encourage you in the midst of the fire mm. until you're on the other side of the fire. Come on. Uh. Yep. 
That's good. Mm. That's good, brothers. That's good. Really? Because and I'm I'm doing way too much talking. But one more thing, because <laughs> that 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 you mentioned it earlier. Um, as we were talking earlier, like yeah, I said like man, I really feel like God told me I'm a compass. Then Maurice turns around and says like, well, God told me I'm a bridge. And I'm like, wow. So like, like Maurice is the one that you go to when it's time to transition. Because a bridge always takes you from one place to the next. And so that's the kind of person Maurice is. Wherever you find him at, like when you run into Maurice, you better you might as well just say, Oh shoot. All right, time to transition. Like there's something I need to face. <laughs> there's something shoot. I need to get over. There's there's a destiny and a and a and a place that God has for me. I need to go there now. And this man is here to help me through the process, to take me to the fire encourage me through the fire and then also congratulate me when I'm out the fire and said, Hey, you made it. Yes. It mm-hmm. hurt, but you made it now go tell others and help them across too. Mm. You might find yourself saying my butt is too big. <laughs> you may. <laughs> and he, and he might've shown you that it was too big. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Facts, <laughs> man. No, that's also real. I think, I think it's interesting <clears throat> the way you just described it, because I really do come into people's lives and there's like a moment where they're like, Oh, I'm so happy you're in my, Oh no, you came into my life for a reason. Oh, dad gone. Like there's like, that's a real moment people have where it's like, um, cause I might not talk to you for months at a time. Like for me to go silent in your life, is just very normal. But if you see my name on your phone, <laughs> it's a whole problem. It's a whole movement right there. Um, but I have also learned it's interesting that whatever we are for everybody else, we tend to lack within ourselves because God always has to show us that we need him. Uh-huh. So for Jason to be everybody else's compass, sometimes he's like, where am I at? <laughs> and for me to be people's bridge, I'm often like, I'm so sick of this transition. And by the way, I'm not really sure where on the bridge I am. Am I going to fall over and drown? Right. Mm -hmm. And so for you to be what you need to be for others, you often need to experience it so that when God is giving you encouragement for somebody else, he's also speaking life to you. That's part of that process. Yep. I've never thought about it that way. I've never thought about it that way. I often tell people that, like, if you're talking to me, usually it means one of two things. Either this is the last time that God is going to tell you something or he desperately wants you back Mm. and you're like on Mm -hmm. your way to the other side. Right. Um, I'm the person that's like at the edge of, you know, I used to say that like I was Christian around the edges. I was on the fringes Um, (laughs) (laughs) because like, but that's where I'm at. Like I'm on the edge and like by the time you get to me, either it's the last time he done told you or he desperately wants you. And that's the thing that I struggle with personally. Like, I always feel like mm. I'm a little bit away from God. Right. Mm. That like, I need to be drawn in. Um, that like, he didn't told me something over and over again and I can't quite make it happen. Um, and it's like, that's, I've never thought about it that way. That's, that's helping me. That's blessing. One thing I'll say about dialing, Dialing conversations are fascinating. First of all, I often uh, refer to him when I introduce him to others as uh, Dylan, comma, pastor of a church, and then continue with what I'm saying, because he does not like to be referred to as Pastor Dylan, right? But there are these moments where I've called him on the phone, and I have said, I feel so far away from God, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to trust him anymore, and because I'm at the place that he just described, and he goes, Now, do you need me to respond to you as a brother, as a friend, as a pastor? What do you, which, which version of me? (laughs) And sometimes I go, none of them and all of them. Just say what you got to say. Right. And when, when, when pastor Dylan begins to speak, you understand how the Lord uses him. Right. Because of all of his like, you know, and I mean, I I don't be understanding where I stand with God, but when he starts 
acting for God and speaking for God, he knows just where he stands and the way that the word comes out of his spirit and out of his belly, like he done lived that word. I didn't need it from, from, from David in Psalms because the Psalms might have, might as well have been written by Dylan, like the way he speaks them wow. and vo vocalizes them. There's something real about the way that you deliver the word. It, it comes out as authentic as if, as if it was breathed on you, just not on the author. There is an authenticity with Dylan. So when you say you go to the people on the fringes, people on the fringes don't want Christianese. People on the fringes don't want, I'm just blessed and highly favorite. People on the fringes need real faith from a real man who's been through some stuff, who's asked all of the questions they're asking and yet found out that God was the answer, that Jesus was the answer. That's who you are. Is that what we doing today? Yeah. That's where we standing. <laughs> Dial, Dial, you you rock with Tim Ross, right? Yes and no. Like I'll be I'll be on and off because like I'll be listening to him mm. and then and I hear he like, then he then he hears himself. Yep. And I'll be part. like, never more. <laughs> that never part. more. Um and so like every now and again I listen to him. I don't have no like I think he's doing amazing work. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I just, you know, it's it's hard sometimes to listen to yourself. Right. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, shout out to Tim Ross. Uh, Tim, if you ever want to interview yourself on your podcast, bring in Dylan Dylan Sellers. Let let them let them talk a little bit, and you'll understand because y'all oh, are wow. so similar. Yeah. But yeah, but when when you when you get to Dylan, Dylan is like a fire starter. Like like you can't help but have something ignited in you. After you would like talk to Dylan, like he he the epitome of like, uh, -uh go get it. Like it, it's almost kind of like, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? You heard God, you know God. Like, go do that. Like, <laughs> what what is it? Like, and and the and the thing that especially I love about Dylan too, like he he can't help but to influence. Like like his name means like the great influencer, like, or, or the great influence, something like that. And so like everything that he does, when you really see um, his gifting and his anointing show up is when he's able to be in spheres that he has great influence and pull in. Um, because just recently he brought together quite a few leaders of uh, Cleveland, Ohio, um, for just a prayer meeting, just to get together and, hey, as us, all of us pastors and spiritual leaders, we're going to get together, we're going to pray, we're going to get after God. He spearheaded that. He influenced a whole region, a whole city to say, hey, if we're the spiritual leaders, this is what we're going to do. Like, enough of this now. Like, so like, that's, that's who this man is. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. You ever like somebody ever talked about you in in a way that you knew was true, but you were like really confused by it because like <laughs> you never thought that that would be who you are, but it is true. It's a thing that happened, but like that's mm. not who I ever thought I was going to be. But that's mm. who I am doing that thing. That's crazy. Mm. Nice, yep. fellas. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about this, this is now, for us, this is all very familiar. By the way, I did not know we were going to spend time doing this in this episode. Right. But as we've been talking, what you guys may have noticed is that Darius has been silent. Yep. And there is a reason for that. Okay. <laughs> this is this is a hundred percent of Darius's personality. He is like the silent giant. Okay. He often is quiet. He gives everybody else their opportunity to speak and to say what they have to say and to observe what needs to be said. Because when Darius comes in, he is the adult walking into the conversation, bringing forth the wisdom into the room. Yep. And when Darius speaks, you thought that you were wise and you thought that you brought some Jesus in and you thought that you knew the Bible and you thought, and when Darius speaks, you kind of get checked like, huh? So I didn't really read that at all. <laughs> I didn't really know nothing about what God was saying. I completely missed the Lord. Sorry about that, Holy Spirit. Right? There is something about wow. the maturity of Darius that whatever room he's in, and, and I'll say this because he won't, he won't say this, but this is fascinating. Darius, when I say he's a giant, 
Darius has stood beside so many of the greatest pastors in America. And he and not some now some people they try to be around big pastors in America, right? There yes. are some individuals who they they work hard to try to rub elbows. Darius gets thrust into situations where he like he like gets like knocked into a room and he's like why am i walking into this room and he looks up and he looks beside him and he goes huh how do i look <laughs> sitting by you huh. <laughs> fascinating like and and so like he can't he can't take credit for it he wasn't working towards it now he works while he's there but he literally stands beside giants observing absorbing and then when he speaks, he's the ultimate influence on every person he's around. That to me is who Darius is. That's big bro. That's, that's everybody's big brother. How old are you? Uh, 36. He ain't, I'm older than him. That's my big brother for real. <laughs> I will say this. I've seen Darius, uh, two things for, before he says something. I've seen Darius interact with his older brother right and it is fascinating because it is the only time that i get to see darius as a younger sibling Mm. right like Mm. he has such like respect and reverence for his older brother so much so that he feels safe around him and it taught me something right about what it meant to like respect and have honor for somebody in your life who you can feel safe around, mm. right? And watching him go through that process of like being around his brother and like waiting on his brother, like I'll just go let him handle it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not dropping names on purpose because I don't know how the most interesting men in the world want to move. You know what I'm saying? And so like <laughs> no names on purpose. Uh, but like you know, it, was, it showed me something. And then it was to to your point of being thrusted in the situation. So I'm gonna tell a story, but I'm not gonna use any names. He's gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. He comes back from this large conference, right? Um, it's one of the preacher conferences. It's a very, very big one. He happened to be in the room with like one of like the major, you know, head honchos. His shoe is untied. His shoe is untied. And one of the head honchos notices it and bends down and ties Darius' shoes. Mm. Right? When he told me who it was, I was like, wait, don't he have people to tie his shoes? What is he doing (laughs) tying your shoe? Mm. But the kind of wisdom that you are going to see or hear, right? And we put a lot on it and we don't put enough, right? Um, The type of wisdom that you hear has to be like marinated in the spirit. Mm. Right, like he, I could talk about that man all day. Um, I often judge people by like what I might say about them if they passed, mm-hmm. and I don't you know do. that I would be able to speak. Um, I would just have to stand there. It brings me to tears even thinking about a world where he's not in it. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's my brother. I love you so much. I really. <laughs> What are you doing right now? I'm sorry. I got emotional. My God. I got emotional. I got emotional. My God. You want to know, like, just real quick, an interesting fact that I don't know if I've ever shared is, like, uh, I've gone to a lot of funerals in my life, and I look around the room, and some have a lot of people in them, some don't. And one of the ways that I actually live my life is, like, if that's me up there, I, I view the room as the amount of people who I've impacted or the lack thereof. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And it kind of, it kind of like, I'm kind of sad sometimes when some of them, when I see like how few people have been impacted by that person being here or going to one that you see how many people have. And so, the interesting part about just that whole thing that I don't think, I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody else out of Karen is just like, I literally, when, when I pass, I want the room to be full of people whose lives I've impacted and not, not just like a, 
a blow by type situation. Mm. And and you know when that time comes, long, 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 long from now, long, long, um, long time from now. Letting y'all know now that 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 room be jam packed because already the amount of people that this man has helped, like all of us, like the three of us and tons more can talk about one-on-one conversations that we've had with Darius that have completely not only encouraged us, but even at some point helped shape and change the trajectory of our lives, whether it was something he specifically said or by the example he led. Like if you want to see a man after God's own heart, Uh. you could look at, you could look at David. That's cool. But then you can also look at Darius because the the submission and the fear of the Lord that this man has and holds and how he lives his daily life. It like is not a game like like this isn't a, like a cute thing they likes to do. Like when he says he loves the Lord, when he say he follows God, when he says I'm going to obey God, like that's on God. Like, like it's, it's, it's no, it's no games when it comes to Darius. Like he lives this thing out for real. Like it's rare that you see such a sincere walk and such a, 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 like a unrelenting moving forward towards God. You, you don't see that a lot um, in the Christian faith, but like he, He's one of the ones that embodies it. And because God trusts him so much, that's when you get head honchos tying your shoes and he literally gets pushed into these into these rooms, into these spaces. And he don't be looking for him, y'all. Like he's really not like that. But because he's like that, God trusts them in these space. So he built different for real. <laughs> so, Darius, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the next thing to talk about. I think that this conversation, I didn't exactly know where it was supposed to go, but it's making sense to me. We are modeling something. Do you know how many men have lived from birth to death and never been able to sit with a room full of brothers and give them the roses before they die? And this ain't the first time we've done this as men. We we know each other well enough, even though there's all kinds of things we don't know about one another. But we know each other well enough and we posture ourselves in such a way where we're constantly learning from one another and teaching one another, observing one another. I want you to speak to Darius. What is the value that you get from this type of relationship and bond as a man? That's a solid question. This is hope rising, y'all. I think the value that um, that that you get from it is something you can't really describe because I don't think that it's one of them things that you don't realize you need until you're in it. Uh Um, And it's a a rare situation. Um, And I think that um, this isn't you don't end up in these type of spaces and places without um, a deep work, like really having to um, fight to be here. Like I, I like Dylan kind of hit on it a little bit earlier talking about him and Jason, but I think that like if we sit here and act like we always agree on everything, we'd be lying. Mm-hmm. Fact. And so you have to come to a you have to make a decision that if if we know that we we're we're here together and this is what we're called to do that we're going to fight to keep our group together regardless of our differences and that can be challenging at times because we all come from different backgrounds <laughs> we all all of us are married and all of us have different wives. Like (laughs) all of us have different schedules. Um, All of us have dialing. Like I got three. Jason has one and one on the way. Maurice has two and dialing as of right now is still able to do whatever he wants to do. (laughs) (laughs) Except, except dialing is the only one. Who is a shepherd with sheep? Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. And absolutely as a profession, he is he is constantly speaking into lives and touching lives. Not yeah. that not that some of us don't do it as well, but I'm just saying like the Lord has already given Dylan a whole lot of risk, yeah. a, a lot of fatherly responsibility. Facts. Yeah. But um but I think with the the the, the most healthiest thing that I can think of is um I look at this group and I think of a place where um, the best thing is you don't always have to be strong. Um, and um, I, I like this reference that I heard. I think it was uh, yeah, Pastor Darius Daniels used as he was talking about the story in the Bible where the friends um, lifted the person before Jesus. And like they ripped open the roof and lowered him before before him. And one of the things that he said that I feel like we have is he was like, sometimes you got to know when you're the one that needs to be lowered before Jesus Mm -hmm. and when you're the one that's doing the lowering. And Mm -hmm. I think that based off of our group, I feel like we're able, we've we've done enough to be like, hey, I need to be lowered and I know that y'all lower me and won't drop me. And I feel like each of us could say the same thing when it comes to all of us in, th- that are here is that we all can be the one that needs to be lowered and be okay and know that we're not going to be dropped in the midst of us being lowered and not um, having to be that strong one. So I think can I, ultimately- Can I jump in real quick? Because there's something I want to I wanna share. It's a revelation that I got maybe two months ago. I was in that scripture, and what I noticed was they lower they lower the man in, and Jesus looks and he says, "I can't remember if he said because of because of their faith, your sins are for-. he looked at their faith and then he said, "Your sins are forgiven to the man, right And I thought to myself, it's like, Holy Spirit hit me. You guys just did that whole trek you you carried." the weight of another man and you brought them before the feet of Christ and your faith got his sins forgiven, but didn't y'all have sins too? And I realized in that moment, don't take all that time carrying all that weight to Christ and not get yours. And I think that that is part of what we get in this brotherhood is that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know the revelation be heavy when he when he hits me. It's kind of like when I heard Jason talking. That's my example. And Jason was like, "All of these men are six figure men, seven figure men. All of these people." He was never talking about himself. And the thing is, in this accountability group, your time is always coming. So someone is always going to turn back to you and say, "Bro, you're not going to be sitting here at the hands of, of Jesus and not get your blessing, and not get your mm. revelation." You you need to get yours too. You 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 are going to serve and be served, and that is something that's that's critical that we get here. Yeah, I, <laughs> Jason, I wanted to say this to you while you were talking. But I'm gonna go ahead and say it now, um, since Darius gave me the nod that like he he wasn't following that. Um, <laughs> did y'all see the little handshake? Okay, so I wasn't the only one. I did, I did. See, this is brotherhood, right? Ooh. We know the signals. We know the signals. He he had sat back and he like, yep. I saw the look on yeah, his I face. Got he said, really? I ain't got nothing else to say. <laughs> but this is something that I wanted to say to you. I am so happy you found your voice. Mm. That you yeah. you stepped outside of whatever shadow you thought was being cast, and and really like stepped into like no, I'm Jason, and this is what I do, mm. right? Um, yeah. Because we benefit so greatly from you using your voice, and I wanted to make sure that like I said that because like the way you've been talking just today, right? I was mm-hmm. like. Yeah, that man done found his lane. Um, and he, he is who he is. And I love it. I love it. Um, no, why you, sit, why you sit up? <laughs> Go ahead. You should have seen Maurice's face when I, laid, when I, said, when I uh, sat up, too. Yeah. Um, 
But I think that one of the things that's so powerful too um, about us being in this group and being able to function the way we do is us understanding who we are and not trying to change each other, but embracing, right? Um, Maurice, you you said this earlier and I was like, ah, because it's something that um, Dan and I have had this conversation. I think Jason and I might have. Um, I don't know if we have about the understanding fully what it means when when um, Paul talks about us, the different parts of the body mm-hmm. and being able to really be like, you know, if I'm understanding it, you know, Jason is the lungs and I'm the heart, not trying to convince the lungs to be a heart, mm-hmm. but embracing the lungs for what the lungs is and its, fu- and its function and everything and just understanding it while he's doing whatever it is he's doing, he's fully operating as that lung, but also understanding like Jason also understanding that he is the lung and me fully understanding that I'm the heart. And I believe that that's another reason what makes this group our group the way it is, is because um, we all understand who we are. Like that identity piece is so huge and because we all understand who we are, we're able to function with each other the way we do because I'm not trying to get Dylan to be Darius 2.0 mm, or yeah. to get Maurice to be <laughs> Darius the third or Jason to be Darius the fourth. Like, that's not <laughs> what we're trying to do. I'm unapologetically who I am while fully embracing who each one of you are. And I think that is one of the keys to what allows our friendship and our brotherhood to be what it is, is because there are certain things that based off of our belief systems, we're not going to let each other slip off of. But when it comes to personality type, like, you know, we're going to allow them to be who they are. And one of the, one of the things I think that was kind of funny is Donna and I just have a saying when it comes to, like we kind of came up with a saying, and I'm not going to go into the history of it, but it's like, I know what you are and I know what you're not. Um, <laughs> yeah. And That's when bad. you can embrace that and be okay with it, um, it helps us all function together. Like, I know what you are and I know what you're not. And I'm not going to force you to try to be what I know you're not because yeah. it, it's a disservice to you. Um, and puts unnecessary pressure on you and will cause um, unnecessary unnecessary um, division between us or strife between us based off of that and trying to do that. Mm-hmm. Jason, what do you have to add to that? Because I know, I know this, this is important to you. You literally created a, a business of like, we need to learn how to work together. And yet you you have um, a, a distinct way of seeing the, the differences and strengths in people. So what what is it do you think that, that you wish that more men understood? And just as a culture that people understood about how to interact with one another, encourage one another, and actually allow all the, also people to be who they were born to be? I, I think just understanding... I I don't have to lose for you to win and vice versa. Like, like, le, like legit, like we can all win together. Like there's all room at the table for all of us to eat. Like, like I, I love listening to like uh, Kevin Hart speak a lot of times. Cause a lot of times he's talking about like his relationship with Dwayne, the rock Johnson, either of y'all want to come on, you can, um, but <laughs> <laughs> like you know you like you hear them talk about like oh man like you want to produce it I'm like cool i'll produce it like there's no ego but there's no ego because they're so secure and confident in who they are there's no room for like like there's no room for that they just want their friends to win and so i i think just us just understanding that like for me to be great doesn't mean that you have to be less than or I have to make you less than. Um, and if I am doing that, then there's a major insecurity that I have to dress within myself because why do I want you to lose just for me to win? Like that, that doesn't make sense. And so I, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like, like, I, I want to say we want to embrace true hum- humility, 
because humility isn't downplaying yourself. I, I feel it's fully accepting who you are in your lane, but like realizing this is your lane and like, this is what I am and I know what I'm not, you know? And because I, a lot of times I think we think humility is like, Oh man, no, you know, not me. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Like, no, that's in, like, no, that's not humility. Like Jesus was humble, but he fully knew I am the son of God. I am the son of man. You heard him say one more time. I am the true vine. He's saying all these things. So no, when he says all these things, he's not being arrogant. He's just confident and knowing like, this is who I am for real. But I also understand where you're at for real. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I understand you don't maybe know or understand who you are fully. Right. And so yeah. like, as like, I like, we like, we all need to come to a place that like to really just look inward and like really understand our giftings and everything like that. And to stop looking from the left to the right and just really be humble, accepting the full totality of who you are, accepting who you're not. Um, and that's that. Like if you're looking for a prophetic word for me, maybe, but I know that's not like fully of who I am. I'm not like the, the say of the Lord. Like that's not me. It can be if God wants to use me in that way. That's cool. But I know my lane is more of a, hey, have you thought about this? Or I just want to remind you who you are. That That's my lane. And so I know I'm going to operate specifically in that lane mm -hmm. and be confident right there. So that's the say of the Lord, too, by the way. <laughs> that part, it, we'll let you, we'll that let you live on this one. We'll, we'll let you live. We'll let you live. I, I want to I wanna undergird your point uh, with, with an example. Mm -hmm. When true humility is operating in front of you, it makes people uncomfortable. There's another part to humility that is important, right? You have to understand exactly who you are um, in your lane, but also understand who you're submitted to, Right. So like you're you have to come under the subjugation of the I of the I am. Right. And so like I am who I am, but I am I am him only because of him. Right. And so like and I'll give you an example of what this looks like and how it makes people uncomfortable. Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. Deion mm -hmm. Sanders. Um, I'm sorry. Makes I'm sorry. Stop. Stop. Shut it down. Shut it down. Deion. <laughs> I want to say this public. You, you are you are the number one guest that I want on the show. You, I've literally gone over the list with Jay. You are yep. my number one coach. Prime. I want to come on here, talk about fate, talk about your journey. You only got to come on for five minutes. I don't care what you do. Somebody let him know. Somebody let him know. We'll start with it with his son. One of his sons. They're all great. His daughter. I don't care. So we'll work up the ladder. Dion, this your invitation. Go ahead. Dion. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I've been watching um, his post game interviews recently. Every one of them. Right. Um, and his swagger would make you uncomfortable if he wasn't so clearly under subjugation, mm -hmm. right? Like, if he wasn't so clearly submitted. Because, like, even when he could, he could slip with language, right? Like, he don't even cuss, right? And he's always mentioning the Lord, right? Like he know he Deion Sanders. He knows what that means, but he knows that he is Deion Sanders only because of the I am. And that's the part that like will have you in this false humility, which is actually pride, because if you view yourself as small, you have discounted what God has said about you. Come on. And that's pride. Mm -hmm. That's you being the controller of you. And that's a problem. Right. And so like pride has two ends. Right. Yeah. There's there's the end of you like being um, feeling like less than dirt. That's pride. And then there's you feeling like you are the I am. That's pride. Where you need to be is I understand who God gave uh, who God made me and I am submitted to him because I only am. Like that I am piece that uh, Maurice gave us at the beginning, beautiful. I'm him. I'm him because I'm trying to be him. Like the him is aspirational for me. 
I am him because I keep dying to be him. Like it is. Yeah. It's yeah. Good stuff, bro. That, that pride piece is so good. I'm going to share a story um, of a conversation Maurice and I had. Right. And I was telling them about this dream and we were going over it and he made it. He was like, he was like, bro, he was like, that's pride. And I was like, wait, whoa. And I wasn't insulted. I just was like, it caught me so off guard because the way the way it had slipped in was it was a sense of, oh, y'all didn't need me then. Now y'all want me. I'm cool. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, bro, that's pride. Yeah. And I was like, and when it when I sat with it, I was like, whoa, it really is. Like, like that, that, that might back then you didn't want me, now I'm hot you all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it it was a form of pride. And I had and I think because so many times we've been taught that it's like it's a banging on the chest. And an arrogant thing that we don't see it in other in other ways that doesn't look like arrogance. So when you're doing something like that, like downplaying who you are, you don't see it that way. Or if you intentionally aren't going to do a certain thing based off of how they see you or the lack thereof, it's still pride. And so I'm, I'm just glad you brought that up because it made me think about that conversation because I think sometimes we miss it because we don't fully understand the full scope because we've only been drawn in on one part of it. Mm -hmm. And because we've only been drawn in on that one part, you miss, you know, it's like a spider, like you only see one leg and you miss all the other ones based off of the fact that it's because, because you're zoomed in on one leg. Mm. Yeah. Missing the tree for the forest or missing the forest for the trees, whatever that idiom is. Yeah. The yeah. That one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's interesting because I, I have also um really I would even call it I've studied Dion's press conferences, right? Um, because <clears throat> there was I was watching I was watching some interview he did one time and he started talking about his faith and in in the midst of it he was describing, I mean, you know, you guys know he got sick, he almost died. I mean, he was he was in, in a rough way last season. And so yeah. he's literally been at the 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 highest of heights of life but he's also it the lord has made it very clear i'm still the lord and if i wanted to take you out i could right and so when you see his life the greatest fruit that he has is never in the victory of a football team it's a man standing on the sideline speaking life to his son while his other son is filming it all and his other son is playing on the field and his daughter is probably in the stadium. Like, like he's a man who is a family man. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he has been great at everything he's touched. He played football. He played two ways when he played football. He played professional baseball and was incredible at it. He's been a coach and you're seeing him as a father. You're seeing him as a man. And yet he'll be the first one to tell you he's only who he is because of Jesus. And so there's something about, no, you're seeing the fruit. The fruit doesn't just come on the field. It comes in those relationships. Yeah. It, he, yeah. he is fostering something when he speaks about those other kids and what he is speaking into the lives in that locker room and, and the way he's changing and molding people. How many people will be at his funeral? Uh, and I don't and yeah. it, if it was only the people whose lives he'd changed, not fans. Right. Not 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 me. Right. Not people who just love to watch a story. If it was just the lives he affected, he still would have a packed house. And there, and there would be people spilling out into the streets. And to me, there's something in that that just, it makes me know that I I cannot hide anymore. You know, I one thing that, and Dylan and I, I remember the first time we talked about this. Dylan and I both have, have, have the same type of pride issue, right? Like where like... We do what he, what he just described. Oh, no, man, I'm not I'm not about to do that. I'm not about to make this moment about me and blah, 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 which is pride. So we end up like kind of like hiding in plain sight. And then what happens yeah. is when we get challenged, it's like the jack in the box and the pride comes just jettisoning up and I can't believe you said this to me. Do you know who I am? Right. Yeah. And then, so it comes out crazy. And so what would it look like? 
if we learned hey. how to just get up in the morning and say, I am who I am because God made me that way. And everything that I'm not, I am because when I'm weak, then I'm strong because of him. And so I'm going to walk out being a son of the most high. I mean, I I got his DNA. And so at the end of the day, like that's, I think that that is, it's necessary. It, we're not talking about vanity and we're not talking about being prideful, but we're saying, what if it was about saying I am full because I am made me that way? Uh. Hey. I am enough as I am today. And that cycle is so vicious, right? Because I think about the fact that like you intentionally hide and then be upset when you're not seen. <laughs> That's why I don't like you. <laughs> right. And I can say this because I've done it. Right. Like Absolutely. facts. You like, ah, no, nah, I'm going to just play the background and then. And you see something or you see some you see something going a certain way, or you see somebody like, what is this about? But it's like, you refuse to step up as though you added any value. And now you're upset. I'll tell you when it happened to me and made me uh, made me really angry. Right. I'll give you a specific moment. So summer of 2020 happened. Right. And I've been playing the background in the faith community for all my life. Right. Especially my adult life. Playing the background, playing the background. And. All of a sudden, all of these pastors and people who like who I know are having all of these conversations about faith and justice. Right. Um, and I am the faith and justice guy. Mm -hmm. I can't get a phone call returned. Ain't nobody calling me to like figure out what's going on, like nothing. And it's like they're having all of these conversations and like saying some outlandish stuff that like makes absolutely no sense. But they're doing it. And it was like. But you hid for like years. So why are you mad that they're not calling you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so why are you upset that like you ain't the one that's like doing these things? Because like you hid for years and still hiding in this moment. Like you're mm -hmm. you're still doing it. So what are we what are we really upset about? Um but no, that's a real thing, bro. It's a real thing. So how do you not hide? By doing what you're doing right now, in this moment, this is effectively not hiding, right? Um, like, and I'll, I'll take that point just a, a, a touch further, and I'm going to let Darius do his thing. Maurice, you said, like, <laughs> I, you know, we brothers, man. Yeah, I see we the know, we, we know what it is. Hey, every time he does that lean forward, we all, we all know we what already it know is. We already know what's up. Right. We already know what's up. <laughs> So, like, the, the thing that you said about Dion, just when you said, like, you know, how many people would be at his funeral, not as fast, just the people that he had an impact on, right? Like, who he impacted their lives. The reality is the reason that he's impacted your life is because you can see him. Mm -hmm. You would be one of those people, right? <sighs> to the point that, like, if, if Dion was doing everything that Dion was doing, but his son wasn't putting it on social media and he wasn't flashy, you wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be having a conversation about what true humility could look like submitted unto God because there would be no example because we couldn't see it. Yeah. So it is very important, like the, the thing like this social media thing, like doing the podcast, like speaking up, like being present when you show up in a space, like all mm -hmm. of that is like not hiding. Mm -hmm. Um. I think it requires more from us sometimes than we are willing to to give up. I think we've we've begun to sometimes we hold on to what our thought is of ourselves or what we've identified with and then we can't break away from it. And it does more damage than good mm -hmm. because we're not willing to change it. We just stick to it as, as an identity, right? And I'm not coming for specific groups when I say this, right? But like, if all you ever do is identify as an introvert and you never give yourself a chance to do anything differently and you tap into everything and all things introvert, then you'll never fully, you may never fully be all that it is that you're supposed to be or all it is that God may want you to be. Because you, your identity is an introvert, not in him. Mm. Uh, can I say and something? I, too? 
I'm sorry. I just want to say something real quick because mm-hmm. it triggered it. I was having a conversation with Ash the other day, right? And I said, I'm not sure if I was born an introvert or if me being an introvert is a trauma response. And I wonder how many people are introverted or extroverted or whatever they are simply because of pain and process or unprocessed pain. Yeah. And 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 it's something that you grab a hold to because now you have somewhat you got a name for what you're doing so now you can hold it up in front of you and i say that as somebody who some of the spaces and places and the rooms that i've been in especially within the past two years came from me giving god a yes and the way it happened is and what you said the trauma response is so good I've been in so many rooms and places and spaces and I've seen stuff good, bad and different that I was like, I'm cool on spotlight. I don't want it. Right. Like, so my plan is I'm going to play the background and I'm not going to do anything else. Right. But then this is why I say what I said earlier is because. But if God says something to you, like what he said to me. Are you willing to sacrifice your privacy for my glory? Mm. Will you do it? Or will you just say, this is who I am. I play the background. This is what I do. Like, one of the things that most people don't know about me is like, I dreaded public speaking. Dreaded it. Until I gave a yes in college. It was like my, 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 my freshman or sophomore year in college. I think it was sophomore, right? I was like, all right, if I'm supposed to be teaching and doing all this, (laughs) then I'm going to say yes. I gave my yes. And the end of that semester, I had two or three speaking finals. And then I also subbed for... uh, I was also teaching classes at the Y. I was an assistant. And then that same week, my supervisor went on vacation and he needed me to cover his classes. And so if I don't do that, that was the start. Hmm. And it was done. And I think sometimes we don't, sometimes we don't, we, we, God is not a, he is an equipper. He doesn't just thrust. And I think that we get so, we get so, (laughs) you're wild, bro. (laughs) We we get so, so, um, so distracted or so caught up in the end that we don't realize that he's going to process. Right. Like I think about the story of Joseph because that's the story that God has been using with me. He was always eventually going to get to Genesis. Let's be very clear. (laughs) (laughs) so always gonna get the genesis so he has the dream as a teenager and doesn't get to the palace until he's in his 30s but the reality is is in every step in the way of the process it says the presence of god was with him and so that meant that he was processing him for that but sometimes we just get to the end of the story and we don't look at the fact that like without him going through some of the stuff he goes through he doesn't know how to handle the he doesn't know how to handle the palace if he doesn't go to Potiphar first. He doesn't know how to handle the palace if he doesn't understand the culture and the context of where he is and the time that he's in, because that's not how he get, grew up. He didn't grow up Egyptian. So he had to learn all that stuff before he got there. Mm-hmm. And so so many times we don't look at the in-between. We just think, I said yesterday, tomorrow I'm about to be there. Mm-hmm. And And because of that, we say no, or we hold on to the different stuff that we went through, like Maurice said. And it was just like, like, and, and it it hit home with me because I don't think that I used that language when I had that discovery of it being a trauma response. I just, I just was like, okay, this, this, and this happened. I seen this, this, and this, I'm cool. I'm a background. 
<laughs> like I'm a background person. But then as I begin to walk into it and embrace it more, and it's still like, I'm not going to make it seem like it's the easiest thing to do because it's still a process because we've told ourselves for so long what we do and what we don't do to the point where it's rooted in us and we really believe it. And so we have to renew our mind and unlearning. Unlearning is such a major thing, but I think about that because, um, and Jason and I have had, I think Jason and I have had this conversation because there are certain people who I see, I've seen what's on their life, but they've tapped into this this personality assessment or this here and now it's their identity. Mm. I'm an Enneagram eight. They got too much information. They now got it's their, too much information. Listen, yeah. and and I can say this, right? Like and and even if you have this is what's so good. If you have somebody who is a true facilitator of an assessment and they understand the f- assessment thoroughly, like y'all know I've I've done the um, advanced assessment with DISC. Anytime something major happens in your life, they tell you to take it again because you're not the same person. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because you respond to things differently based off of what happened to you. But what we'll do is, I took this ass- assessment in 2010 and we're in 2023 as though nothing has happened and our identity is fully based on something we did in 2010 as though life has stopped and nothing has changed. And so, yeah, man, I don't don't even remember how we got here. No, but that's, that's where, where we need to be. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah. Because like the, the the question that keeps kind of like running my mind as you were saying everything there is, was like, what has to die in you to be great? There's something on. that has to die, <laughs> like, but like, but for real though, like, mm. like maybe it's a self perception, maybe it's you know who you thought you were, like something has to die, and of course now I'm also thinking about Jesus saying taking up your cross daily. Maybe part of that death is I need to give death to who I thought I was, give death to my preferences, give death to how I thought this should go. Because we we're talking about pride earlier, right? So if I'm still trying to <laughs> hold and have control and everything, that's still, I'm still in some ways operating in pride. Mm-hmm. So humility is that submission, is that letting go to say, you know best, God. And so since you have what's best for me. I have to let go and let die whatever I thought I was because I've actually kind of been like thinking about this for myself a little bit of how I was like, I, I've identified kind of like as an introvert um, for the ones that know me, you could probably be like bread as cat, but for real, for real, I can like be in the house <laughs> <laughs> and like, like I'm, I can hermit crab like no other, like I don't have to leave the house I don't have to say anything for hours and I'm really fine. But like, I've also started like pay attention to myself, like doing this, like if y'all could like see on the inside, like how, like, like how jazzed up I am right now. Um, And this is like a very like extroverted thing that we're doing. So it's like, Hey, you know, maybe I'm not as quote unquote introverted as I thought I was. Maybe I actually do get energy from talking to people. So maybe I'm putting my identity in something that I don't need to fully put my identity in, but rather embracing the full complexity of who I am. Sometimes I'm introverted. Yes. Sometimes I'm extroverted. Yes. Sometimes I'm Enneagram 2. Other times I'm Enneagram 8. Sometimes I'm (laughs) INFJ. Other times I'm PF. QC, whatever Run it is. Now, like, <laughs> like you whatever. Say PF chain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll. Whatever the case may be, <laughs> like, like, like we we so much try to simplify who we are. And it's like we like we serve a deep, complex God. And even if you don't serve him, a deep complex God made you. So you're deep and complex. Mm. And so a lot of times we try to 
simplify I'm sorry, something slow, say so that deep one more time. Complex. I need that yeah, again. Sorry. Run that back. <laughs> that way is so good. Run that back. That's, that's fine. The, Sorry, I was just kind of flowing the deep and complex situation. Yeah, yes. you serve a deep and complex God. Jeez. Even oh. if you don't serve him, you were yes. made by a deep and complex God. Like, I'm yes. taking that one with me. It's in my pocket. <laughs> I'm, right now. I'm, I'm pretending that was mine, too. I'm pretending. <laughs> I'm taking that you, you know, You know what's crazy is that, like, that's actually, in one of the translations of Fearfully and Wonderfully Made, that's what Really? The, yeah. I didn't know. What? Wow. I didn't know. Of course, My Darius bad. knows that. Why are y'all shocked that Darius knows I, that? I, I, I yeah, actually, it's, it's like, can we be it's honest? Like I'm how... shocked that you don't know it. <laughs> Let's be very clear. Because, <laughs> because Dylan, will, Dylan will let you teach all kinds of stuff in the scripture, and he know all the all the translations that he's not telling you he knows, and then in <laughs> the cultural context behind it, and the way that the city was set up, and how the men and the women used to operate, and what the clothes yeah, they wore. Yeah. And so we're not going to act like we were supposed to know that Darius knew it and not think that you knew it. Like we're not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think it's uh, it, it says like how wonderfully complex you've made. Me. Oh um, yes, okay, I know what you're talking about. I wanted to say something to about death. We're wildly uncomfortable with death, and so the think to think that something must die is a complex emotion for for people in the world, period, especially in our culture, because we don't speak about death and everything surrounding death is always bad. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, we don't, we don't get comfortable with death unless you experience it. And then you, you go from being like in shock by it to being numb to it, to being comfortable with it. Mm. Right. Um, and when you get yeah. comfortable with it, then you start seeing it as a nece- uh, as a necessary part of who you are and you welcome it right like you know that something must die and death doesn't trigger this automatic like fear response that something is ending right and that has a lot to do with like how god made us i don't think and this is me and you know the genesis scholar is here so like <laughs> But um, I don't I don't think God ever intended for us to die. And so when he fashioned us, he fashioned us as if we were going to live forever and reign with him. So when we take the knowledge of the tree of the good, uh, uh, the knowledge of good and evil and we eat of that thing and he says you will surely die and we start dying. Death becomes a shock to us because our body isn't meant, isn't meant for that. Right. Like so we don't really comprehend like what's happening. And so yeah. people deal with death like it's a shock, even though everybody knows that you're going to die. Right. Everybody knows that in order for something to live, something needs to die. But because we are so uncomfortable with it, when someone says to me what needs to die in me, I immediately get sad instead of seeking help. Mm. I immediately like I can't. What do you mean something got to die? Does that mean I'm going to lose something? Because that's where I'm going, mm-hmm. right? It's it's not that you got to lose something, baby. Like, the truth of the matter is you already lost it. It's already gone. You're just holding this dead thing, right? <laughs> and then so that dead thing is not going to be a thing Jeez. because there are some dead things. What's the dead weight you're carrying? Oh God, sweet. Here's, Jesus. here's one for you, Maurice, because you don't woke your brother. You don't woke your brother up, right? There's some dead things that will help you grow, mm-hmm. right? It's fertilizer. Mm-hmm. Like when you go to a forest, <laughs> there are trees and there's a cycle for it, and some dead things, you know. But if it's organic matter that you are holding in a place that it don't belong. If it's there, it's going to intoxicate everything. Think of a bushel of um, apples or think of like um, bread when it spoils. Right. If it keeps the dead thing near anything alive, it has ruined the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But if you take that same dead thing and put it in the garden, it becomes compost and it helps things grow. So you need to know where to put the dead thing. But if you are uncomfortable with yeah. death, you'll never identify where those dead things need to be in order for you to grow for your next season. Yeah. 
So <laughs> two things, D. So scientifically, they don't know why we die. Yeah. Like that's a scientific fact. Yeah. Like based off of how the body is 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 uh set up, they don't understand because the body heals itself. It it's a, the system of the body is so so wonderfully complex <laughs> that um that it it doesn't like death really doesn't make sense when it comes to sickness and everything like that because the body heals itself. Um the second thing I'll say that I, I seen this not too long ago that was very interesting about dead things helping things uh grow is that you know we're notorious especially here in America for um getting rid of leaves when they fall. Uh-huh. And the reality is, is when the fall, when the leaves fall, it actually helps the soil for the next season because of the worms and different things that are underneath there that's feeding off of it. But when we remove it, we disrupt the system. So a lot of times what ends up happening is things don't grow like they should or the way they could before on, man. because we've removed the dead stuff because it's not pleasing to the eye. Come on. Um, or because we don't want to see death, baby. It, it doesn't give it doesn't give HOA the curb appeal it's looking for. And so it now curb appeal. Now we're 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 jacked up because um because we're removing stuff that that was meant to help us get better. So it's like, like one of the things I, I think about too, is like pruning in the pain, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like we talk about it. I don't think most of us really understand. Um, it wasn't until I had moved to North Carolina the first time that I ever seen a tree thoroughly pruned. And like, yo, when I say it looks like it's nothing there, like they cut all the branches off. And it almost just looks like just a, a a a trunk with these little nubs. But in due season, uh-huh. when the season is there, uh-huh. it actually flourishes more than it did the, the the season before. But also, pruning takes pruning takes skill, so it has to be cut a certain way in order for it to thoroughly be beneficial because you can cut it the wrong way and kill the tree. Mm. You could cut it the wrong way and kill the tree. But, and then the other thing with pruning, but pruning is so necessary because if you don't prune the tree, then it can't produce as much fruit as it is in its DNA to produce. So the pruning is necessary so that the tree is healthy, so that the branches are strong, that everything in within the tree is nice and strong, so that then when the fruit is produced, not only will it be produced for that season, it can keep on producing fruit. Uh-huh. One of the things, and and sorry about that. Go ahead. No, no, you got it. No, you got it. One of the things that that I love about um, this group of men, in particular, is that. To me, it is the death that we have not um, tried to hide that has produced or been used by God um, to produce the individual anointing that we have. When when I'm around these brothers, like y'all don't y'all don't play pretend with me, right? If I if I call Darius on the phone, like he's not he's not going wherever he is that day is where he is. If 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 I call Dylan on the phone, like I always say, like if I have a best friend, it's Dylan, and like if I call him, he ain't about to play no kind of game or pretend with me, okay? Yeah. If if I call Jason, Jason and I were talking today, there is no kind of pretend, and so yeah. we 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 own what we what we are and what we've been through. We own our parts of it, and to me. The Lord uses our the courage to stand to withstand, and that has produced some of the very anointing that we have. That when you speak, 
people see the humanity in it, but they also see God's divinity because you couldn't have made it through what you've made it through without him. Mm. There's something in that. Um, you know, are you, if, if God is pruning you, are you pretending that the pruning isn't happening? Are you trying to, to, to very quickly take what has been cut off and to hide it behind the house so nobody knows? Or are you willing to say, Lord, how long must this sit here until I can clear it out? And if I am clearing it out, what tools should I be using and who should be coming and helping me? And what is the appropriate time and season for me, for me to get rid of it? Not to say that we're supposed to hold on to dead things for forever, right? But to say, are you pr are you allowing the processing of the dead things to take place in the appropriate manner? Things think things process in certain seasons and in certain times, and sometimes we we try to avoid processes at all cost, and in in turn, other people suffer. Because yeah. you, you can't don't... cover yourself with fig leaves. You sure can't. You sure can't. I'm looking at I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking about I know people have to go to work tomorrow and uh, this was a lot longer than I thought we would talk and yet I'm not surprised clearly clearly we're going to be doing this again clearly um, mm -hmm. and so here's what I want to do first of all if you guys are watching right now I want to encourage you I mean you've probably already been blowing up the comments giving us your thoughts giving us your takeaways your opinions but what I want to ask you to do would you put it put in some questions that you want us to answer or address the next time we talk. Like, would you get, look at, look at, look at their faces. For those of you guys who are listening right now, they have the fear of God in there because they, like, they know some questions could come out. My answer, huh? <laughs> you, they do want your answers. They probably going to be like specifically if Dylan can answer. Um, so give, <laughs> right. us, give us your Fact. questions that you'd like for us to answer so that the next time we do this, and for all I know, we'll be doing this here, but, you know, Dylan has a podcast too, the So I Said podcast. We may we may do something on his podcast, but so, so give us the questions. We can decide later what to do with them, but I just want to, and then Jason has a podcast too. Now, generally his is solo, but he may want to decide to bring us on his solo. So, 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 excuse me, on his podcast. So, how we'll do it, who knows, but I want to encourage you guys, leave those comments, send this uh, this video to somebody who needs it or this audio recording to somebody who needs it. Also, before I jump into the last couple questions, uh, did you guys know that we're actually taking on sponsors this season? We actually have three sponsorship packages. This is a beautiful thing. Jason and I were like sitting the other day and we were like, all right, what do we got to do to bring in some sponsors? And we put we put the word out and we had the first sponsor within um, 10 minutes. Um, so look at the Lord um, when you don't hide. Beautiful things happen. Um, so we want to encourage wow. you guys. You see wow. on the bottom of the screen, go ahead, send us an email. We will send you over the packages and the way that they're set up, you can sponsor one episode, you can sponsor multiple episodes. I mean, it's very, very affordable. It helps us keep the lights on, so to speak, in terms of being able to make sure that we can keep running the podcast. And I also want to be able to take care of Jason because he did season one, just taking care of me for free. And I only share that with you guys because um, I want to honor him uh, as much as possible. Um, and so make sure that you guys, if you're interested, hit that link up, let us know. So I guess we'll do this. Is does anybody have anything that you got to make sure you get off your chest, something that the Lord has dropped on you? I do want to get to the last question, but I want to make sure that I don't keep anybody from, from saying what it is that you got to say. Um, I will say this, um, and I'll say it real quick. Uh, maybe this is a, another episode that we'll do together. I think that it's important that y'all talk about like what it's like to be a husband and father, but still honor Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to like watch you all, like all three of you pretty closely um, and how you've maintained your faith um, while taking care of your families. Um, and it is an honor to be a part of that. And I wanted to like give you public kudos because rarely do we get to do anything publicly where it's all four of us. Um, and like the way that y'all move and honor God um, and the things that you are imparting into your children and into your wives um, because you honor God is like, it gives me lots of hope, right? Um, for when I have children of what that looks like. Um, and what their what their uncles will be able to impart into them, what their aunties will be able to impart into them because because of the way that you live your lives. And so I felt like I needed to say that um, because brotherhood is important, but there's a context to that brotherhood. Right. Um, and 
part of that context is your families and so thank you hmm. you said you said we're going to do this on so i said sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean you brought the topic up <laughs> I got you. Yeah, we gonna we gonna set it up. It, set it, up. It, it would make sense. It would make yeah. sense. No, that's fair. It would make total We're, sense. That would make sense. Um uh the only thing I wanna uh I would like to say before we before we hop off is just um you know, we talked about pruning, we talked about the death of things. Um, but there's a difference between when God's doing it and you're doing it. Come on. And so the biggest thing that I was just thinking about is like when Joseph's journey took place, every place that he was in, whether it was the pit, Potiphar's house, the prison, the palace, they said in the presence of God was with him. Um, some of us have to be aware and make sure that his presence is with us when we're going through the stuff. And it's not something that we did on our own, trying to be like something we've seen or trying to do something that we feel like we're supposed to be doing and he's not a part of it um, because there's a difference between his presence being with you in the midst of it and um, him not being with you. Um, there's, a, there's a huge difference. So uh, that's just something that I, I really wanted to kind of share and just make sure we were aware of before we uh, moved on. Beautiful. And um, last thing I'll say, I don't know, it, I just feel like everything we talked about is connected. So even when we were talking about like the death, I feel like like for for all of us to reach our next level of greatness, a lot of that death is really death to pride. Pride in the sense of I want to hold this, I want to control this because like death is a release. It's, it's letting go. And so like a lot of the times we're still trying to hold on to the reins and everything like that. But um, as whoever's listening, as you step into your next, like, the, like you're going to have to let it go. Or like Diamond said, you, it's, it's already gone. <laughs> but that let go is, is that release of control to know that at least how we believe there is a God that loves us. He is a father that directs our paths you know, your, uh, your lamp into our feet, a light into our pathway, like allowing him to be that light and be that lamp and to let us, you know, maneuver us and go in the ways that he wants us to go. That's, that's the death that we do every day because we, we have other things that we want to do and we feel like we know better. But at the end of the day, we submit that we release it, let it die and say, no, God, if, if we going to love you the way that we really say we are, this is what we're going to let go. So I, I just want y'all to be great, man. To be great. You already are great, Jason D. Hairston. You are already a great man. And uh, I appreciate how you yeah, consistently yes. catapult us um, <laughs> into new thing. levels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as we, or before we finally wrap today, um, I, I hope you guys have all understood this, but we would be, uh, remissed if if I did not ask Darius and Dylan one final question. I want you to imagine that it is a hundred years from now and there is a museum and it is a, mu a museum of popular culture that really highlights and tells the stories of this particular day and time. As people are walking through the museum, there is one room, and the room is marked Hope. And when people walk into the room of Hope, they are surrounded by artifacts of different people and, and their perception of Hope. And so they, they walk up, and there is a time capsule that says Dylan Sellers. And inside of that time capsule, there's a picture of you and your wife and you doing political things and you at college campuses and you preaching. And, and, it's, and it is, it's the story of your life. And there's another time capsule and it says Darius Salter. And, and it is you with Uncommon and you with your family and you with some of these book, books that the Lord wants you to write that you've still not written yet. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there's all these, I said what I said, <laughs> there's all these artifacts in these, in, 
and and so now they look through these things and there's a video and on the video it is simply your answer to the question what is hope to you what would you say to that person who is in need of hope searching for hope what have you learned in your life about what hope is I love how they have the exact same posture they, and they thinking right now. They literally did the same face. They both, they just both went, <laughs> like this. <"Shh." laughs> oh, God. Uh, let me think about this. Give me a second, boss. Bishop, you want to go first or need in a minute? I need a minute. <laughs> Another episode. <laughs> is hope. Hope is yep. the other side of death. Um, and so what I have learned in my life um, and I've become very acquainted with death is that like on the other side of it, you start to see um, there's these moments um, when you're in the throes of like grief, where your life becomes very, very clear. Um, when you're in these moments, things that like don't matter, you realize don't matter. Like there's a clarity of thought. Um, this isn't the time for you to make decisions, but there's a clarity of thoughts. You realize what's important in your life. And those are the moments that remind you that there's hope after. Because while you're in it, you realize you're still living. And so then you see things around you. And for me, it was my nephew and seeing his face and realizing that he couldn't comprehend necessarily what was going on in my head. But he was going to live. And that was hope for me. That like his growth meant my hope. Right. Um, and so on the other side of death is this idea of hope. Right. Is I've let something go. Um, this thing doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but while I'm in the middle of grieving the thing that doesn't exist anymore, there's a clarity of thought that these are the things that are important and that there is growth around me. So therefore, there is hope. Um, and so. That's that's how I've interpreted hope and how I've used it um, in my life recently. Mm. My God. Sheesh. Stop. <laughs> Stop Is it. there a wrong answer? There's, there's the, yeah, one, one, one that's not honest and sincere. That's the only wrong answer there is. <laughs> no, he asked um, that and he, listen, he about to drop. Go ahead. <laughs> he wild, man. Um, in the book of Genesis, one thing we find is... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so as I was... I really was really sitting with that question because, like, I don't think I've ever thought about it before. Um, And so I really had to take some time to think about it, and I'm still, like, wrestling. But I will say this. I think that um, uh, when it comes to hope, for me, it's um, making a difference and an impact that uh, affects the generations after me. Um, that that my children and their children and their children um, are a, have a foundation to build upon based off of the work that I've done um, and not like a work that is tangible and that you can see, but a work that is, that is foundational inside of them that they can continue to build upon and teach their children and their children and their children. 
Beautiful. That definitely wasn't the wrong answer. If there is a wrong answer, that ain't it. <laughs> that wasn't it. Yeah, that, <laughs> that certainly was not it. Mm. Jason, final words. Um, we don't have one. Uh, I, I, I would just say, I mean, honestly, I don't. Because the, the good thing about this, before we hopped on, y'all don't know, but uh, I don't have to answer it today. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I got some more time to... For, for the hope rising question. So I'm sitting pretty tonight. Um, but as far as final word, I, I would just say um, I'm, I'm just grateful to be um, numbered amongst you all. Um, I, I don't take it lightly. Your friendship that like any, any, any of you I can call almost literally at it at any time. And I know even if my call isn't picked up, it's going to get returned or I'm going to like hear from you. Like, like, I, I, I just uh, really appreciate you all. And, and I'm glad that for the ones listening, they could just get a little bit, you know, just a little bit of the, the, the wisdom, the care, the, the fullness that you all bring. Just get a little glimpse of it because again, we're, y'all are deep, complex people. Y'all ain't going to get it in an hour 30. It, you're, you're just not. Um, but, I'm glad you all able to at least see a little glimpse of it, of like who these guys are. And I sincerely hope that like in listening to it, it's, it has ignited something in you, whether it's like, man, you know what? I really need to find my brotherhood. I really need to find my sisterhood, man. I really need to let something die, man. I, I really need to do like what, whatever it is, whatever your takeaway is, please make sure you say it in the comments. But um, I hope you gain something from it because at the end of the day, I know, my heart and their heart is that after you hear us, you're better. Whatever that may look like for you, that you're just a little bit better, that you're thinking about something a little bit more deeply. And we're all ones that help push you to what's next forever for you. So go and be great. I certainly feel like this conversation was one that went in, in a, from the very beginning, Right. When I said, you know, we're going we gonna to give the real the real information about who these who every individual is. I did not think we were going to actually spend time doing it. And yet it was one of the most organic interviews we could have had. And so what I'm hoping that you as the listener, as the viewer got out of this conversation is the fact that we are all still works in progress. And the question is, will you allow God to do the work in you and allow for the progress to take place? We don't have to stay where we've been, but where we've been can help become a catalyst and a catapult to where it is God's taking us. And I just, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to be on a journey with you gentlemen. Um, and I'm also just thankful to be on a journey with all of you who have been listening and watching. I'm so excited for this season. Um, as you guys begin to see some of the faces and hear some of the voices in this season, um, you know, in season one, I would say was somewhat obscure. Um, in season two, we're bringing on some some national individuals who um, we'll, be, we'll be having conversations with in the next couple of days. Jason and I have been kind of geeking in silence, um, un, like just can't fathom some of the guests who are coming on. But it was really important that at the beginning of this season, you get a foundation. This is foundational. When I sit down with my wife, foundational, <laughs> like you're getting foundation. This, this isn't, this hope rising isn't about chasing after something. It's about standing fully within something. Are you willing to answer the call and stand in who it is that God is calling for you to be? That's the hope. That's the prayer. And that's what I hope you will take away from today. So again, please um, leave a review if you are listening on wherever you're listening. Um, make sure that you uh, have subscribed today, that you have left a comment today, that you've asked a question today, that you've shared the video today. And then as always, we look forward to seeing you next Monday on Hope Rising, where the uninspired go for inspiration and the unfulfilled go to find fulfillment. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you.